as part of the so-called synodal way, an overwhelming majority of German bishops voted to bless same-sex unions. The Bishop of Antwerp, Belgium, this week, pointed to the controversial apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitia, as laying the groundwork for these blessings that would begin in Germany in 2026 and appear to have already begun in Belgium. What's happening here? Joining me now to share his thoughts on this and other stories, the former head of the Vatican's highest court, one of the world's foremost canon lawyers, Raymond Cardinal Burke. Your Eminence, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Raymond. I'm pleased to be with you. Your Eminence, uh, I want to begin with the German bishop's action here to begin the blessing of uh, heretofore illicit unions in 2026. Vatican Secretary of State Pietro Parolin told Crux this week that, quote, a local particular church cannot make a decision like that, which involves the discipline of the universal church. But there must certainly be a discussion with Rome and the rest of the churches in the world to clarify what are the decisions to make. Um, Your Eminence, I'm wondering, when, the, when Cardinal Parolin says it's a good sign that the German church has agreed to hold off until 2026, I, I suppose there he's alluding to the synod in Rome, that they would consider this question. Your thoughts on what the Secretary of State is commenting here about and uh, the idea that the synod could feasibly approve this, can they, canonically? No, oh, it simply needs to be said clearly that the, the question of God's plan for man and woman, his plan for the sexual union, his plan for marriage, could be a topic for discussion and debate, uh, is absurd. Uh, a synod exists to ponder the teaching uh, of the faith, uh, the sound doctrine and discipline of the church, to see how it can be more effectively proclaimed and and uh, and exercised in a particular period of time, not to invent uh, some new teaching. This is an old problem in the church. Uh, uh, St. Paul talks about people with ears itching for, for new doctrines. There's, well, there have always been people with their own agenda and ideology who tried to use the church to advance it. And it, it's profoundly sad, but this has to be stopped. And if, indeed, uh, what has happened in Germany is a, a preview of what is going to happen in the Synod on the Synod, uh, on synodality, which is a word that to this day no one has been able to uh, define for me uh, adequately. Mm -hmm. uh, they can go on for pages and pages, which uh, uh, and at the end of it you don't have any clearer idea than you had from the beginning, uh, th that this... Uh, uh, if this is what's going to go on in the synod, then the poison, the the defection from from Catholic teaching and practice, uh, will uh, affect the whole church. That, that's a, it's an impossible situation. This this has to stop. Mm. I mentioned earlier that according to Bishop Bonnie of Antwerp, these blessings are already taking place. Now he pointed to Amoris Laetitia, the Pope's, uh, of course, uh, exhortation on the family and love. Um, and there is evidence that these sorts of blessings have been done in Catholic churches, even here in the United States. Is this a tactic similar to what was used back in the 70s and 80s to bring altar girls uh, into the norm, when a generally accepted practice becomes the norm? Talk about that and how Amoris Laetitia may have opened the door to this. Once this happens, the single instance of it, it has to be corrected immediately. Uh, to allow something as as grievous as uh, the blessing of a of a of a so-called same-sex union uh, in the church, uh, it becomes a, a practice. As and this was clearly indicated by Bishop Bonnie earlier, and apparently he spoke about this at the at the meeting in Germany, uh, that should have been immediately corrected, and, and it should have been made clear that uh, that this simply is not possible. That was the problem uh, at the time of the Synod on the Family, the two sessions in 2014 and 2015. Uh, what was called into question was 
the teaching on marriage itself, the union of, of, of man and woman, uh, indissoluble, faithful union. The idea was given that, well, in, in some cases we can permit people who are validly married and uh, are, are divorced and are living in a marital way with someone else to receive Holy Communion. And uh, that's simply not possible. And that's exactly what's happening now. It, it, uh, and it seems that this is now the, uh, the next stage uh, in, in this uh, attempt, uh, this, this ideology, what's been called a paradigm shift, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's not Jesus Christ uh, who teaches us in the church through sacred tradition and sacred scripture, it always closely bound with one another. Uh, and, uh, this is, these are human inventions, human ideologies that are, that are being pushed and, and, and the church is being used. Uh, and what it does is it, it renders the church then into some kind of a, of a, of a human agency, almost like a, a government agency that's being manipulated to to uh, to foster certain programs and certain certain agenda, and so uh, the, we need to wake up to, to what is happening, and uh, it it begins with this with this notion of synodality. It begins with this notion that somehow uh, the, the church can remake herself. And if you uh, will notice that in a lot of this talk, you never hear. The name of our Lord. You never hear mm -hmm. talk about what our Lord Jesus Christ is is teaching us, what He's uh, asking of us. Uh, so, uh, the, so, so this is a, a, a very serious situation. Your Eminence, do you have a sense that progressives are upset with the slow pace of Pope Francis's reforms uh, or their version of reform, if you will? And are they using this German synod uh, to, perhaps to internationally push him, using, you know, from different countries pushing forward on these issues that many thought were already settled? Well, I, 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 it's interesting. It, what I see is that the church is being used because. Uh, the Pope sometimes says things that are very, very clear and in accord with the, the Church's teaching with regard to these matters. And what, uh, what the agents of, of the revolution uh, do is simply ignore these statements and, and take other statements in which he seems to, uh, to be favorable. And uh, it, it's this atmosphere of confusion which has... Uh, really entered in a strong way into the church, which permits this kind of thing. If, if people have the idea, well, the, the church really doesn't know what she, she truly thinks. Uh, this is also, it's a tragedy in itself and causes tremendous suffering. It, it is, of course, danger uh, for the salvation of souls, of losing souls who are, who are led into error and, and confusion. Yeah. Your Eminence, um, I guess one of the, the things I've absorbed this week, reading all of these accounts of the 10th anniversary of Pope Francis's pontificate, um, many are trying to label uh, those churchmen, those laymen who uh, raise questions about the direction of things, including things you just mentioned, granting communion to the divorced and remarried or extending blessings to certain groups that, you know, the, or unions that are not licit in the Catholic context. Um, and those people are often derided as against the pope or going against the pope or enemies of the pope. But forgive me, didn't the German bishops already discuss this matter with Rome and the pope and then ignore the prohibition? Aren't they the enemies of the pope and Rome? <laughs> exactly. Uh, those of us who are uh, addressing as best we can with our own limitations the teaching of the faith, uh, the, the living presence of Christ in the Church, uh, are, are called the enemies of the Pope, but we're the ones who really love the Pope. And we realize that uh, 
uh, he has a tremendous burden on his uh, shoulders. He's the, the successor of St. Peter, the vicar of Christ on earth. Uh, he is the principle of unity in the church. And uh, as our Lord said to, to St. Peter, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and this is the office of St. Peter. And so we, we are the ones who love the Pope and are trying to, to help him to carry out his mission, whereas uh, these people who simply ignore uh, what uh, uh, Rome is saying to them, what the See of Peter is saying to them, uh, show that they, they have no respect for him, whatever. They are indeed the enemies of the Pope. And, uh, and and uh, and that needs. I think it's clear. Any any reasonable person can see that. Mm. Uh, Bishop Bonnie also said, and we should point this out, that Pope Francis did not say yes or no to blessings of same-sex couples last year during the bishops ad limina visit to Rome, that it would be, quote, your decision, up to the bishop's judgment and discretion. Your Eminence, why is the local bishop's discretion trusted here, but not allowed in the case of the Latin Mass, let's say, which is clearly permitted and licit? Last time I checked. These are uh, simply uh, blatant contradictions. Uh, the the rite of the masses that was celebrated for 15 centuries and has been constantly celebrated even after the Second Vatican Council. There were there were always places in which the the venerable uh, rite as it was uh, uh, solidified and uh, uh, proclaimed in a, a most beautiful way by Pope St. Pius V. Uh, uh, this is something that is a treasure in the church. As Pope Benedict XVI said, what is, uh, what is beautiful and good at one time can't suddenly now be, be ugly and bad for us. And so uh, uh, it, that, a, that a local bishop wouldn't know uh, where is the best place for those who desire to worship our Lord uh, according to the, the, the more ancient usage of the Roman rite is absurd. Well, on the other hand, we have here, uh, in the question of the blessing of the same-sex unions, we have here uh, 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 an, unchange an unchangeable teaching of the faith, and uh, uh, the bishops are being told that they can decide to take an action which denies that teaching. Uh, according to the quote I read of Bishop Bonney, that he said that uh, the Pope said to him, the, the, the only thing to be concerned about is that you be united. Well, we can't, being in union in, in error, being in union in a, in a departure from the Catholic faith is not good. It's, it's very bad. And that uh, certainly can't be uh, uh, the direction that the, the Pope gives to a bishop. Isn't the denial of Catholic truth itself an act of rebellion and a crime according to canon law? Indeed, it is, uh, uh, and uh, it, it's appropriately published, uh, punished, uh, uh, whether it's a departure, uh, uh, heretical teaching, uh, uh, denial of one of the doctrines of the faith, or, or uh, uh, apostasy in the sense of simply uh, walking away from Christ and from mm -hmm. his teaching in the church to, to, uh, to uh, embrace some other form of, of religion. Uh, these are crimes. I mean, these are sins against Christ Himself, and uh, obviously, then of the of the most serious nature. And there, there, the the code of canon law provides the the appropriate sanctions. Cardinal Burke, uh, this past week, uh, the National Catholic Register's Ed Penton reports that a group of French bishops are now asking Pope Francis to reformulate, you referred to this all earlier, reformulate Catholic doctrine on homosexuality uh, in order to make the subject more audible, in their words, to the faithful. Uh, do, do you see something organized in the timing of these converging groups seeking to change whatever aspect of the Church's ancient teaching it might be on sexual morality? Well, it would be difficult not to come to that conclusion. Uh, we, uh, this 
question the 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 so-called homosexual agenda has been a very strong part in the whole synodal way uh, in, in Germany. And now that the French bishops would propose this to the Holy Father, uh, and we know that there is a, a strong movement among certain groups in, in various countries, including our own, uh, to to push this agenda. Uh, it, it seems very clear to me that this is uh, uh, exactly what's what's taking place. There is an attempt mm. to uh, uh, to remove effectively what has been what the church has always and everywhere taught about uh, same sex relationships. Mm. Can this work? I mean, even Pope Francis has voiced support for same sex civil unions um, himself. He's not supported same-sex unions being sanctioned by the church. Who do you think is driving this, though? Who is behind this effort? Well, there certainly are. We we know there certainly are forces in the, in secular society that are very powerful uh, and that are 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 pushing this very strongly. Uh, and I think what has happened is that uh, uh, elements of their thinking have uh, sadly entered into the church and are, and are being uh, uh, either knowingly or uh, unwittingly uh, adapt, adopted by by prelates or by uh, by others in the church to suggest that the church change her teaching. This is a little bit of the of a general problem in the church today in her relationship to the world. Uh, we there's a lot of talk today about the, going out to the peripheries. The church needs to go out to the world. What the French bishop said about that the church is teaching uh, could be more audible. These whatever that means. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, the church goes out to the world. She always has, but she goes out to the world with with Jesus Christ, with his gospel, with his teaching, with the, the, the beauty of the sacred liturgy, with the truths of the faith, with the goodness of the church's discipline. And that's what we bring to the world. And think of the, uh, the wonderful history of the missionary work of the church. And these same people who push this agenda also try to discredit uh, the whole history of the church. In fact, what they want to do is to say that everything that's gone before has been tainted. They you accuse it of, of the church of various isms, uh, and uh, and that now we we are the enlightened ones who who have come up with this new church that uh, it suddenly seems to resemble the world more uh, than the body of Christ. Your Eminence, I, I also want to get your thoughts on what Pope Francis said this week concerning priestly celibacy. The global reportage is that he's planning to reevaluate the discipline of celibacy in the Latin Church. But uh, I, I want to read you the quote. I'll get your reaction. There is no contradiction for a priest to marry, the Pope said. Celibacy in the Western Church is a temporal prescription. I do not know if it is settled in one way or another, but it is temporary in this sense. It is not eternal like priestly ordination, which is forever, whether you like it or not, whether you leave or not, is another matter, but it is forever. On the other hand, celibacy is a discipline. Cardinal Burke, again, um, reporters are leading him down this path. You know, they're asking him this question, and I wonder who, who, who's pulling the string there and elevating the topic of priestly celibacy. How do you read this? Well, of course, we had a tremendous crisis in the late 60s and 70s over the question of priestly celibacy, and the first synod of bishops addressed it in a very effective way in a very fine document, and uh, uh, there were many wonderful studies done of the discipline of, of uh, priestly celibacy. And the fact of the matter is it's of apostolic origin. It's, it's not something temporary. It's something that uh, has always been in the church. It has its root in the example of Christ himself. Christ is, is the high priest. Christ is the priest of priests. It's it, the individual priests are become brothers of Christ in his priestly ministry by his grace. And he chose not to marry. Uh, he, he embraced celibacy without in any way contradicting the great good which is of marriage. And so 
we understand by that, and of course there's a whole reflection that needs to take place of the fittingness uh, that priests should be celibate. Now, I'm quite aware, as I, as I know you are, that there are married priests, uh, legitimately so, but that the, the, the church's favored discipline in this regard, uh, what she views as, as most fitting, is that the clergy be celibate, and this has been, uh, this is for this subject to be raised again, is 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 really quite incredible. What we need to do is simply to uh, plumb more all of the, the the study of the church's tradition uh, that was uh, uh, has been done over the over the ages. The canard is that this was an invention in the 11th century, and it was to preserve land and keep it from falling into the hands of uh, descendants and family members. Oh, Th this is, of yeah, course, no. you know, latter-day nonsense. Right, it's, right, and it's a way to control priests and all, the, uh, all these kind of psychological theories and so forth. But I can testify to you, I'm 48 years a uh, a priest, and it's it's been a great gift. And uh, I understood at the time I was ordained that those whom Christ calls to the priesthood, He also gives the grace uh, of, of celibacy. And uh, uh, the, the problems that that priests have with priestly celibacy uh, come from from ourselves, <laughs> not from the the discipline itself. It's a beautiful thing, and uh, and we have so many wonderful examples of this. Uh, this selfless, uh, total uh, gift of the priest uh, uh, to the flock. Your Eminence, I want to move on to something else here. Archbishop Paul Richard Gallagher, who's the Vatican Secretary for Relations with States, said his staff is, quote, negotiating improvements to that still secret pact with the Chinese Communist government. According to Gallagher, it was, quote, not the best deal possible. That could be the understatement of the year. W what does the Holy See hope to achieve here uh, at this late date, Your Eminence? And um, uh, is it advised to even continue in this pact at all, given all the bad fruit we've seen proceed from it? Well, I, I have uh, thought from the beginning how can you negotiate with a government which has said openly and clearly and acted accordingly that the only acceptable religion in the country is the country itself? As the present premier says, the only acceptable religion in China is China. What this means, therefore, is that any kind of dealing with the uh, with the Catholic Church is going to uh, on their part will have to subject the Catholic Church to the the agenda the the atheistic materialistic the communistic agenda of, of China and so I, I it's impossible as far as I'm concerned and uh, uh, I yeah. I think what we need to do is to uh, look again to all of those confessors and martyrs for the faith in China uh, who remained loyal to the Holy See, remained loyal to the See of Peter, remained loyal to our Lord Jesus Christ, and, uh, and, uh, and support them. They, uh, they're, they're, and we know that there is a, a faithful group, the underground church in China, uh, who have always, at, at great suffering, uh, uh, yeah. remained faithful to our Lord and, and, and to his church. And instead, the government, even after the so-called agreement, and as you rightly have pointed out, we don't know what the exact terms of the agreement are. Uh, I mean, they've burned down convents and schools and expelled people and, and, and imposed oaths that are impossible for a, a priest or a bishop to take, uh, which would, uh, in fact, put the government... Uh, over the, over the church, put the government over Christ himself. That's not possible. So yeah. uh, I perhaps the 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 archbishop was uh, uh, just trying to uh, speak gently about it. But I I trust that uh, that it's understood that this this just w was a bad idea from the start.
Mm. I need your thoughts on the case of Jesuit artist Father Marco Rupnik. He was excommunicated after allegedly sexually and psychologically abusing nine women, nuns, and a man. Then the excommunication was somehow lifted. We still don't have clarity on that. He has broken limitations placed on him by the Jesuits, his order, concelebrating mass at a Roman basilica last week, and the Vatican refuses to lift the statute of limitations. What should be happening here as a matter of justice, if you will, uh, Your Eminence? Well, the, what needs to happen is the proper canonical process, which exists and is well articulated, uh, needs to be followed. And this is a big problem uh, in the church today is there's no respect anymore uh, for the norm of law, for the rule of law, or for for processes. The idea is, oh, these are just human processes and so forth. Yes, but they're processes developed by by the church over time but to safeguard the truth and, and therefore to, to administer justice. And, and so what has to happen is this whole thing has to be uh, committed to the, the proper canonical investigation and, 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 and the process needs to be allowed to come to its proper conclusion, uh, which would then dictate what uh, uh, discipline should be applied to Father Rupnik. And, uh, but uh, but to continue like this in this confusion and it, uh, uh, is very hurtful and, and, and very harmful, and of course it's yeah. it really has a, such a a, a broad uh, scandal because uh, his artwork is found practically wherever you go. I, I mean, I, right. I've, I've seen it in Lourdes. I, uh, so the, the sanctuary of Padre Pio, uh, there, well, it's just, he's been, uh, and of course, in the Vatican itself. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I, I believe that, that we, ha we simply have to insist that a proper canonical process be undertaken. Mm -hmm. No, he's ubiquitous. He's everywhere. And, and as you said, at major shrines, major churches and installations. And look, for all the, the good canonical adjustments the Pope has made over his pontificate in this area of sexual abuse, he has a really checkered record when it comes to enforcing it. We just have to say that. Your Eminence, before we run out of time, I have to get your reflections on the 10th anniversary this week of Pope Francis's pontificate. He was elected on March 13, uh, 2013. It has certainly been a rocky pontificate. I don't think that's a secret, uh, really like nothing I've seen in three decades of covering the church. How do you see the remainder of Francis's pontificate playing out, particularly given the increasingly amorphous nature of this synod on synodality? Well, I think it's fair to say uh, that the, the synod on synodality and its microcosm the the synodal way in Germany is an indication of the fruit of the approach that has been taken in which uh, somehow confusion, which was always understood to be the work of the evil one, uh, confusion is somehow seen to be good. And, uh, and instead what it does, as it always does, is it creates division, and, uh, and people feel abandoned. Some people have ab abandoned the church because they feel the church has abandoned them. Of course, we, c we can never uh, do that because Christ has promised to remain with us always in the church till the, until the end of time. We, have, we must remain faithful to Christ and his church even if it means great suffering for us. And so I think that uh, what's happened here is that uh, this approach uh, has... Uh, has created uh, uh, a tremendous uh, uh, division, confusion, uh, and error in the church that has, has to be corrected. I suppose on a certain way, I, I, I saw it from the beginning, uh, this idea that somehow doctrine and discipline are, are bad, are they the, the fruit of people who have psychological problems and uh, all this kind of thing. Uh, and we need to be pastoral. Well, yes, we need to be pastoral. Pastor Christ, the Good Shepherd, the, past, the pastor. But 
what does it mean to be pastoral? It means to teach the truth, and it means to discipline according to what is good and right. And so uh, uh, we have to return, Christ has to re return as uh, the head of the church, and we're always serving, and who, from whom his vicar on earth serves in a, in a, in a, in a preeminent way, and, uh, and therefore have a proper respect for sound doctrine and, and discipline as an expression of Christ's love for us uh, and not as something uh, bad. If, uh, if pastoral means I decide uh, what the church is or I, have, I decide what the truth is uh, w without any respect for what the, the, the objective truth is, uh, then we, we, we end up divided from Christ, divided from one another, and, uh, and uh, what happens sadly is uh, people can also be led into sin and through into situations that risk their own salvation. Mm. Cardinal Raymond Burke, we will leave it there. I thank you so much for joining us, for your insights, and you can visit the Cardinal's website at cardinalburke.com. Thank you, Your Eminence. <laughs> I now want to go to theologian and former head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, Cardinal Gerhard Mueller from Rome. Your Eminence, thank you for being here. Um, I want to talk about and get your thoughts, and you more than anyone should, I know, have thoughts on this, about the direction of the German Synod and the voting to bless same-sex unions and unions of divorced and civilly remarried Catholics starting in 2026. Why do you think they're so determined? I mean, a majority of the bishops supporting this, despite the warning of Pope Francis himself. And I think the majority of this uh, group is not the official group of, of lay people, and together with uh, bishops, they are not uh, respecting the Christian anthropology, that everybody is created according to the image and likeness of God, but they are occupied um, and influenced by this uh, LGBT and woke ideology, which is materialistic and nihilistic, and therefore they have these uh, strange ideas for the blessing of same-sex uh, couples. Uh, but if you look in the Bible, it's absolutely only uh, the matrimony uh, between man and uh, woman uh, who are united in uh, love and the body and in the soul and to have the possibility to become fathers and mothers and to found a family and God blessed uh, in the beginning of the creation not, not only in the chronological um, in the time of the beginning but in the principle the principle of the existence of uh, human nature and this is absolutely blasphemic uh, to make a blessing about uh, those um, um, forms of, of life which is according to the biblical and the ecclesial doctrine a sin because all forms of sexuality outside of a valid matrimony is a sin mm. and cannot be blessed. Your Eminence, what do you make of the vote itself? I mean, the entire body voted 176 to 14, uh, and, and that, of course, included lay people. 38 to 9, that was the number of the bishops who voted to support uh, these same-sex blessings. What's the strategy here coming from the German episcopate? I mean, if you were still head of the CDF, what would you advise the pope to do here? If they are uh, acting or going absolutely directly against the Catholic doctrine, the, the definition of the, of the dogma, against the dogma of the Catholic doctrine, there must be a trial and uh, they must be sentenced and uh, they must be uh, removed from their office if they are not uh, converting themselves and uh, they are not accepting the Catholic doctrine and uh, the lay people who voted there are not the representatives of the, the Catholic uh, people and in, in Germany there are some functioners who was, uh, came together uh, but, but with no authorization and uh, responsible here are uh, the bishops and that is very sad 
that a majority of uh, bishops voted explicitly against the revealed doctrine and the re revealed faith of the Catholic Church and, and of all our Christian thinking against the Bible, the Word of God in the Holy Scripture and in the apostolic tradition and in the um, defined doctrine of the Catholic Church. I wonder if this German synodal way is being used, if you will, to lay down a marker to drive the discussion at the synod on synodality. Mm -hmm. Yes, they want to drive it, uh, see, see themselves as avant-garde of the Catholic Church. They want not to separate themselves from the Church, but they want to make the, 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 the makers and, and, and the, the promoters uh, of uh, the development of the Catholic Church in this direction because they are modernists. They are saying the traditional doctrine of the Church is wrong is belonging to past times in the Middle Ages, and they are uh, more intelligent as the Word of God, uh, like the Gnostics uh, in the second century when Irenaeus of Lyon said they want to, to be more intelligent that, than uh, God, our Creator and our uh, Redeemer. And we must absolutely resist against this a strange and wrong doctrine. Uh, Pope Francis told La Nacion in a recent interview uh, that all participants at this upcoming synod in October, including women, will be given a vote. Isn't this supposed to be a synod of bishops? How can anyone who's not a bishop have, have a vote? Isn't this changing the synod into something entirely new? I think uh, that was uh, they have changed uh, the substance, the essence of this synod of the, the bishops, and if there is a, s a certain form of coming together without a substantial synodal structure, which is synods of the bishops, the, everybody can has a vote, but this vote has nothing to do because lay people cannot vote uh, according to the doctrine of the church. It's given only to the bishops. Uh, this authority in the succession uh, of the apostles uh, by the sacrament of holy order, the episcopate, and and therefore uh, will be only a certain form of, of parliament in an, an, an absolute monarchy. Everybody can speak like he wants, but at the end, uh, the pope is the only one who decides, and I think that is, has nothing to do with with the cooperation of everybody, uh, but also with the respect to the authority who, who, uh, which is belonging to the office of the bishops, of the colleague of the bishops, under and with the Holy Father as a successor of St. Peter. Mm -hmm. We're hearing a lot about the development of doctrine lately. I've been reading that everywhere I look. Uh, that the church's teaching on sexual morality needs an update. And uh, my question is, is it possible for the church to develop its way into ordaining women or blessing same-sex unions? Is that development of doctrine, if you will, possible? No, we have only a development in the understanding of the uh, Word of God who is revealed and given once and forever in Jesus Christ, and nobody can overcome Jesus Christ. The truth is given and revealed in Jesus Christ and uh, given in to us in the doctrine of the uh, apostles. Uh, and therefore, what is uh, belonging to the different the single questions, the ordination of women is not possible, not because we are uh, against uh, the same rights of, uh, of uh, female persons, but because it's belonging to the nature, unchangeable nature and essence of this sacrament mm -hmm. who are representing Jesus Christ as the head and the bridegroom of the church, which is, is um, uh, bride, which is, is the body of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we can look also in the New Testament 
and uh, I made a collection of 600 pages, all the um, um, elements of the apostolic tradition, all the texts of the Church Fathers and, and the later theology, uh, and all these documents and testimonies are what he is saying, expressing the um, unanimous uh, doctrine of the Catholic Church, that is, this sacrament is uh, possible only to give to um, persons of the male sex gender. This discussion is useless because the doctrine is absolutely clear and the uh, highest magisterium of the Pope and, and the bishops, uh, they declared absolutely that uh, the Church has no authority to ordain uh, women. And that is a definitive uh, doctrine of the Catholic Church and nobody, no authority is able to change it because it's belonging to the revelation. Your, your Eminence, uh, I'd like your take on the continued restrictions we're seeing in the traditional Latin Mass and of the traditional Latin Mass. It's curious that something not only permitted but encouraged by the last two pontificates has suddenly become verboten in the name mm -hmm. of Vatican II. Is an outlawing of the old Mass necessary? Is that what Vatican II and the Church Fathers of the Second Vatican Council really called for? Yeah, the uh, fathers of the Vatican Council spoke only of a certain reform of the liturgy, but not of the substance of the uh, of the Holy Mass. And we know that in the one and same Catholic Church, we have have different rites in the Eastern churches, and but is the same Holy Mass, the same substance of the Holy Eucharist, and all the Catholic can take part everywhere in the world. Uh, also in other uh, Catholic uh, rites. And we had also in the, in the region of the Latin Western rite, we have also a certain development. And therefore, it's not understandable that they are fighting so furious uh, against uh, the traditional form of the Holy Mass, which was uh, five, six hundred, was a, uh, in use, and, and, and the, the Roman a canon is belonging, going back to the 6th and 4th century, or uh, at the end this is going back uh, to Jesus and, and the early church, and, and, and nobody can understand why they are so strict and so rigid. Uh, in this case, in this question, is only a question of the liturgical discipline and not of the Dogma, and it is very strange that in question of the dogma, they are speaking about uh, development and out of diversity. But in these questions, uh, there is allowed a certain variety of the, of the liturgical forms. We have so strange abuses where they are going in with the church with a rainbow flag. That is that is a true abuse. And uh, the Congregation for the Divine Liturgy, they have to confront these um, abuses and not only uh, or not to, to, to make a big struggle, uh, a fight, a war uh, against these people who are very devout no? and very close to, to the Pope and, and the, with, with deep obedience. Uh, the, the magisterium and to the the doctrine of of the church uh, in a, a big contrast uh, to that what are doing uh, the German bishops and that is a is a great challenge uh, for the, the Roman magistery to confront these heretical movements and not to uh, to forbid um, uh, a legitimate legitimate form uh, of, of the Latin rite, which is the Holy Mass, according to the middle mm -hmm. of uh, 62. I don't see mm -hmm. here so big problems, and they are losing so much energy in these questions instead of confronting the true problems we have today.
Mm. Yeah, no, the, the rigidity only runs one way, Your Eminence, which seems to be problematic when you're dealing with heresy yes. on mm. one side and, you know, people who have embraced the tradition and are living the uh, faith just, uh, on the other. And we're doing so quietly and at peace. Uh, finally, I, I want to get your reflections on this 10th anniversary of Pope Francis as pontiff. Um, what are your observations so far and what do you think is yet to come? Is this project of reform ongoing or is it nearing completion in your mind and in the minds of those you talk to and see in Rome? I think what we need is a reform, a renovation in Jesus Christ, a spiritual and theological reform and, and the level, the logical level must become higher and uh, the spirituality deeper our faith. We are we are the religion of the faith and Jesus, faith and Jesus Christ, and we have the seven sacraments that are the, um, the great uh, points, and not uh, only uh, the new organization of the Roman Curia. Nobody is interested. No Catholic in the world is so much interested in the, the reform, the other organization of the Roman Curia. Uh, the uh, normal Catholics are living in their families, in their professions, in the world of today, in the parliaments, and they have uh, to fight f for the life against abortion, against um, the, 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 uh, gender ide ideology and all these uh, wrong understandings of, of human beings. We are living in the world with the Third World War, wars everywhere and the uh, suppression of the religious uh, freedom of human dignity. And these are the great challenges. And that I think we must speak about this uh, way of uh, reform and not only uh, superficial uh, reforms, but for what we are need, needed, was need, what is needed is a spiritual deep reform and deeper encounter with Jesus Christ, who is uh, the way and the life and the truth for everybody is unique mediator between God and man. Your Eminence, Cardinal Gerhard Müller, I thank you for your time and for coming out tonight. We'll see you soon. Thank you again. Thank you very much.